Hello, this is Dr. Shorman, and in this short video, we're going to show you how to find your students' grades and how to analyze the results page that comes with each graded item in the course, and also just answer some common questions that parents have about the grading. So first up, log into your student's account, select the course title that you're wanting to look at their grades for, and that'll take you to the course homepage like this one here for Algebra 2. And you just scroll down, you see that grades icon on the bottom left, click that, and up come all of the grades for the course. Notice those columns titled Grade, Percentage, and Feedback. Those will only have something in them if they've actually submitted and finished that particular graded item. So let's scroll down here to an uh, item that I've already completed and there's a, a few right through here and here's one that we've already completed. It has that grade there that you see and uh, the percentage based on a 100 point scale. We'll click on that Lesson 83 practice set. So this practice set has been completed. The student clicked submit all and finish and this is just an example it's one that I did for an example but you can also see down there it says re-attempt quiz we'll talk about that later but attempt one you click on that and that brings up our results page for that attempt one of practice set 83 so you see some information here started on completed on date time taken and again, this is an example. Four minutes is like way too fast for that practice set, but I'm just doing an example here. And then marks. There's different ways that educators like to grade things on a total points scale or a percentage scale. Sometimes uh, most of our items in Shorman Math are on a percentage scale out of 100 points. So you'd be looking at this grade here. And our weekly quizzes are on a 10 point scale. And then there's this feedback row that has the PDF solutions link which you can click on and then also the video solutions link. So all of the answers to every question those are found in the PDF and video solutions. Now to determine what the correct answers are in the results you can see each individual question, question one, question two, question three and so on. They have a lot of other information in there. You can see the question listed there, the different choices. So for a multiple choice question like question one it's highlighted with that green and the green check mark and if the student got it right as well before they submitted it then that bullet there will also have a dot in the middle of it showing that they selected that one. So all the other choices have that X next to them and they always have that green check next to the correct answer whether or not the student got it correct. Now short answer types of problems we'll scroll down to one of those and the correct answer on short answer it's always listed at the bottom of the question so here like on number 11 the correct answer is you can see that right there and even no attempts were made on it but the correct answer shows anyways and then a matching problem the best way to tell for sure on the matching problems especially if it says partially correct is to study the PDF solutions for that they don't show like all of the correct answers here like on this one for example you can see that the first two were chosen correctly but the second two in the matching were incorrect but it doesn't tell you what the correct ones were so you need to look at the PDF solutions for that if you're not sure. Now you can see that history of responses chart and notice it's not on all of them again that's what I was mentioning before if the question was never attempted at all then there was no response made right so there's no history of responses there and you can tell that the student didn't even try that problem. So scrolling back up here to number one, let's take a look at that, this multiple choice question. And look at that chart, there were two actions taken and it even tells you what time and date those were taken at and so the first action was to choose six and then that was submitted and that was incorrect. So second attempt was a two and that was correct. So you can see that in this practice set, the majority of practice set problems, you get four tries, you get 0.25 points taken off each time you miss 
So this question was missed one time. That subtracted 0.25. So got it right the second try. So that means they got 0.75 out of one total points. And so you can see that here with previous penalties gives 0.75 out of one. Now on a 100 point scale, 20 problems in a problem set, that means they're worth five points each on a 100 point scale. So to figure out the total points on a 100 point scale for that problem, you just do five times 0.75. That's 3.75. And so you'd, they were awarded 3.75 out of five. So this 0.75, that's, that's related to the total marks that we talked about earlier. 0.75 marks out of 20 were awarded on that problem. And so that close and grade, that means when they press submit all and finish, that was their final answer on that. And they were awarded 0.75 points. And so that's going to either say zero for the grade on that, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, or one. So we look at that next problem, number two there. It was right the first try. And so the grade there on close and grade is one. So one out of one points for that problem. Got it right on the first try. Now, if your student's not struggling, then you usually aren't as concerned about their grades. But if they are struggling, meaning they're getting 75, 80 or less on practice sets fairly consistently, you want to take a closer look at their efforts. You want to look at their handwritten work. So like this problem one, for example, this one had one attempt on it wrong, and then the second attempt was correct. Now, what you should do is look at their handwritten work. Do they have that problem resolved for that answer of two? Or do they still have it as six? If they still have it as six, that's an indication they were guessing and they just guessed right their second try and they really don't understand it. Take a look at the PDF solutions. The steps that they show for their work should be similar to the steps in the PDF solutions. So if they aren't similar or you can't tell that they correctly solved the problem and, and weren't just guessing to get that answer right, then have them follow the steps under the relearn and correct section on the practice set instruction sheet. Follow those steps, which include studying that PDF solution again, listening to the video solution, not just copying it down though. They should study and watch that solution, then close that up and try to solve it on their corrections page. Now for problems they completely missed, meaning there's either no history of responses like this problem nine here, or they have five or six or more responses and they just receive zero points on that. Again, check their handwritten work. Have them follow those relearn and correct steps on the practice set instruction sheet. Read those steps. Compare the PDF solutions to each missed problem on their corrections page. If a missed problem is not solved correctly on the corrections page, have them do it now. Our years of experience teaching students math tells us that showing work is critical. It's how the student really proves they know how to solve a problem and didn't just guess. And if you have a really gifted math student, however, you know, somebody who, who's working above their grade level, they're making 90s on things most of the time, but they have trouble showing their work. Now, in that situation, you don't want to force it on a younger student like that. It's probably a developmental issue and that'll resolve over the next year or two. If you have questions about that, if you have a gifted student like that, then contact our support at diveintomath.com. Now, taking a look at quizzes, a similar item here. Here's one that has been completed because there's a score. It's been submitted and finished. So we can take a look at that, open up that attempt, and see that results page again. Super similar looking results page to the practice sets. In fact, all of the graded items have very similar looking results pages. And on the quizzes, your practice sets, we said, you know, 75 or 80% or less, you know, you need to be looking into how that student is grading their work and correcting mistakes and things like that. Same on quizzes, about an 8.5. See, we, we grade them on that 10 point scale there. 8.5 or less out of 10 
You've got a quiz instruction sheet. Read the steps under corrections on that quiz instruction sheet and check the students corrections page. They should have a corrections page for their quiz as well. And if they didn't follow those steps, they need to do so before starting the next lesson. Now let's take a look at some common issues and questions. And one thing we hear a lot is about more than one attempt on a practice set. So for example, lesson 83 practice set has a 26 out of 100 grade on it. You don't like that grade, so you hit re-attempt quiz. And then you go ahead and take that again. And I'll just real quick go down here. Remember, after you hit submit all and finish, that's when a grade is recorded. And hit OK there. And that score comes up. So let's go to the course homepage again, scroll down to grades, just so you can see how easy it is to find any grade any time. And we'll go down here to that. That was the Lesson 83 practice set, but it still says 26.25, that first attempt. And we open that up, and now we see two attempts taken there. And look here, though, the grading method is first attempt. That's the one Educadium stores, and the practice sets, that's how they're designed, is for the first attempt to be stored as the student's grade. Second, third, subsequent attempts, those do not count towards the grade. Make sure you understand that. So students should only retake practice sets if there's a technical issue of some kind. And another reason would be if you're studying for an exam, you can redo the practice sets and just practice solving problems. That's another time to retake them. So if you're checking the student's work and they're trying to tell you, well, mom, I got 100 the second time. Well, you had all the answers available. You should get 100 the second time. But for obvious reasons, we don't count that towards the grade. So that's attempt one. If you want to see what they were doing, accurately, honestly check their work and, and their how they were doing, you select attempt one. All the other attempts, those are not accurate evaluations of their abilities because the student's already seen the answers. Now, and I'm sure this isn't your child, it's somebody else's child that I'm talking about here, but sometimes students, they just want to guess, they just want to get through something as fast as they can and not really learn it that well. One way that you can tell if they're guessing is those 75, 80, or below practice set grades. Another way is to open up that practice set attempt and take a look at the, how long it took them to complete it. If it took them like 15 minutes or less and they have a low score, then most likely they're guessing. Get out their handwritten work, compare that to the PDF solutions like we discussed above, and that's going to give you some clues as to what's going on there, if there's a lot of guessing going on or not. Now, if they got a high score, and took 15 minutes or less to complete it, then that could be cheating. Accessing to the solutions manual or other students' answers. So again, compare their homework notes to the PDF solutions. If they just have a list of answers there, that's an indication they might be cheating on that. Supervise their next practice set and just watch how they do, uh, see how they show their work. If they have no ability to show any work and, and solve the problems and it takes them a whole lot longer than 15 minutes just because you're standing there, then that's obviously a good sign to you that there's been some dishonesty going on there. Now another common question we have is missing grades. So let's go back to the course homepage here, scroll down to grades, and again let's just look through some of these and in this particular week that, that I did some attempts on here and, and I'm using as an example let's look at that lesson 81 practice that there's nothing there but that doesn't necessarily mean they haven't tried it at all and so you can tell if you click on it and you open it if it says attempt quiz now down there on the bottom that means they've never opened that before so don't open it and if this is a quiz or a quarterly exam, a weekly quiz or a quarterly exam, especially on those because those are timed and if you hit that attempt quiz now button on a weekly quiz or a quarterly exam, it's going to start the timer and then it's just going to give you a zero because you didn't finish it in time. On practice sets, it's not a, as big a deal because the practice sets are not timed, but still it's just best to avoid pressing that attempt quiz now 
unless your student is ready to start that. And going back here, let's look at the Lesson 82 practice set. Now, let's open that. And notice again, there's no grade there, but let's open it. And look, it shows that there's been an attempt, and it hasn't been completed because there's nothing showing there, and there's no grade showing. So this would be one that the student started but did not complete. And so you might ask them, hey, you need to finish this Lesson 82 practice set. So they go in, continue that attempt, and there you can actually tell they got number one right, number two right, and number three. And it also shows clearly how much they got off on that problem because there were some penalties. That means they missed it twice, right? And they got it right on their third attempt if they got 0.5 out of one marks on that. So they just start here with number four and, and continue working. And if they need to stop before submitting again, though, they can hit that save without submitting and then go back to that. So for practice sets like that where there's no grade but they have started it, just haven't finished it, make sure they finish that, use their instruction sheet for practice sets, and especially the, all those steps under relearn and correct when they're done as well. One last thing I want to discuss is just what the grading methods are for each type of assignment. And you probably know by now, Educatium calls all these graded things quizzes. And we have, we call them like practice sets and practice exams and quarterly exams and weekly quizzes. We have different names for all of these things. It's just any graded item though in Educatium, they call it a quiz. But again, we can go to grades and Let's just open a few for an example here. And so lesson one, practice set, grading method, first attempt. And like we mentioned before, that first attempt is what is recorded as a grade and calculated in the overall average. Second, third, subsequent attempts, those do not count towards the grade for the practice sets. So going back, look at a quiz. Week one quiz. That one, it says that two attempts are allowed and the grading method is the highest grade. And that's just the week one quiz. We did that so that this is your first timed quiz in the course. And so we're kind of trying to give you a little bit of a break there and kind of a free 10 out of 10 on it. Because you take it once, maybe you don't get a 10 out of 10, study the answers, put a good effort into reviewing, then go take it again on your second attempt. And the highest grade of those two attempts is what will be stored as a grade there. Now, two other items here, the practice exams. Let's just look at practice exam 1.1 there. There's the grading method, highest grade on that. So those you can take multiple times and there's PDF solutions that go along with those and those you're expected to take them until you get 100 and it's like it's part of your uh, homework grade, it's part of your practice set grade, and it's like getting a free 100. And we want you to take it that second try, study the solutions, and then try to solve them on your own again without looking at your solutions. Your second try, third try for sure, you should be able to make a 100. And then last are the quarterly exams, and here's quarterly exam one. Notice it has two attempts, the grading method is average grade. So you take that first attempt, there's no PDF solutions, but you can tell what the answers are. And so you study and you go and you try to solve those and correct your mistakes. And then you go take it again. Notice these are not open note. The quarterly exams are not. You can use a calculator and a pencil and that's it on these. So, so you go and you study after that first attempt, uh, study what you miss, and then you take it again. And you should be able to do a lot better the second try. And so then those two grades are averaged together. And it's kind of like giving you some bonus points for putting in a good effort to review, fix your mistakes, figure things out. Okay, well, that's all. Thanks for watching.